All right, week two, done and dusted. My knees did not implode. My back is not broken. Well, I mean, technically it's not broken, but it's probably as close as you can get to being broken without actually being broken. Also, did I play it smart and not go run during the hottest time of the day, during the hottest part of the year? Absolutely not. Week two, really not a ton of difference to speak of. Um, I think the biggest thing that I've noticed was really just the length of the running intervals. This week it was 90 seconds of running. Well, the app, the app says jog and that's probably closer to what I'm doing, but 90 seconds of a jog followed by two minutes of a walk. And to me, that's that feels like a lot of recovery. I'm pretty close to recovering um, a lot faster than that. But I did notice that my body was already used to running for a minute. First day I went out, was pretty hyped, got out there and I almost shut down at a minute. It was like my body said, wait a minute, all we're doing, we're supposed to be doing a minute. I don't know what this minute and a half thing is. Kind of chugged through it and it, all three days I found that it was pretty easy to just kind of get in that groove and to not really focus too much on the intervals because I mean if I'm being honest what's 30 seconds right so my pace I'm looking at my Garmin naturally the data is there I've really tried to stay away from the race indicator and anything else that would tell me like hey you're you're going slower or you're going faster i'm i'm just focused on making sure that i'm running during the whole interval and that i'm completing the whole program and in a pure stroke of genius i decided hey i'm not just gonna go run but what if I went during the hottest part of the day and i went out where there was probably little to zero shade oh and also the hottest part of the year. Wouldn't that be really cool? I figured if I can run during this, then chances are I can probably run during any of the other uh, weather conditions that may pop up. When I'm out there running and it's a thousand degrees outside and it's in the sun and I would rather be at home eating M&Ms, pretty easy to wanna give up and to not push through, but I'm really just trying to focus honestly on um, something a little different this time. I used to get always, always hung up in the numbers. i am got to go fast. I've got to PR. I've got to do all this kind of stuff. I'm trying to just be thankful that I can even get out there and do that. There's so many people that don't even have this freedom. And I feel extremely uh, fortunate and blessed just to be able to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to go throw on my shoes. I'm gonna go hit the park and run. So I'm just trying to have fun with it. When things do kind of get bogged down mentally or physically, I'm trying to remember to focus on my breathing and my technique. And so hopefully when I get tired, those things will carry me through. And if all else fails, I'm just thinking, just get through it, just complete it, just keep going. And you'll have a rest interval coming up pretty quick. This has been a pretty good testing week, not just for the running, but for pretty much everything all together. The way that I've set up the week in terms of activity is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Those are going to be my lifting days. Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, those are the days that I've got planned to go run. Wednesday evenings are when I like to go to Cycle Bar, and I'd, I'd really like to throw in another Cycle Bar day. I just haven't figured out when exactly to put that in because if I go, like say if I go to a seven o'clock p.m. class on Thursdays, then that means Friday morning, I'm getting up uh, lifting and it's usually a more leg intensive day. So I'm trying to figure out when I can mix all this stuff in that I enjoy doing, but that it doesn't just leave me entirely wrecked. Uh, got to, the reality is uh, becoming ancient as I am, I've got to focus on recovery and all of that just a lot more than I used to. The only real day that during the running that I felt a little beat up or maybe just felt the overall volume of the week was on Sunday. 
And that's because Friday and Saturday when I was lifting, those were, I would say, leg intensive days, posterior chain intensive. And I, I really don't want to make this a lifting vlog, but it's kind of hard to not talk about the lifting that I've been doing that is going to have an impact on the running. For example, on Fridays, uh, GPP day, really enjoy those. There's a, there's a workout that I've been doing, some backwards, heavy backwards sled drags directly into about 12 to 15 kettlebell RDLs. And then I like to mix that in with either some plate front raises or some type of a core movement. And I'll do four to five rounds of that. And each round I'll add weight to the sled until it gets so heavy that it becomes nearly impossible to pull it all the way back to the starting point. It's pretty leg intensive. And then Saturday, I was working on some trap bar deadlifts. I think I worked up to a set of three to like RPE nine. Uh, of course, Saturday it was probably closer to an RPE of 10. By the time Sunday rolled around, uh, my legs were pretty feeling it. When I look at my overall schedule, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to shuffle some of those days around, maybe move some of the leg work uh, closer to the middle of the week or the beginning. That way, if I do the longer distances on Sundays, it'll give my legs and body time to recover. Well, I don't really have any major complaints about week two. And I guess if I'm being honest, I probably shouldn't have any complaints because I'm really just getting started. The real test is gonna be, I think this thing, when I looked at it today, um, I'll run that 10K like the week 14 mark. As I get further down the road with this thing, that's when I feel like I'll have more of an uh, opinion on how things feel right now. Right now, honestly, it's it's pretty easy. I mean, I, I can't really complain about running a, a minute and a half with 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 two minutes of, of walking after that. I, I, I think back to when I was running those longer distances and I'm, I'm excited to get back to that point, but got some work to do in order to get there first. Final thought that I cannot close out week two without mentioning. I used to, I used to pride myself on just being not, not the best at photography, but I wasn't the worst. I was, uh, probably some days better than average, most days average. I really enjoyed photography. And as I found, as I've transitioned into becoming ancient, or as my oldest daughter liked to say, she called me middle-aged. And I have to tell you, like when she first said that, I was pretty ticked off. And I thought, there's no way that, I'm, there's no way I'm middle-aged. Like that's old people, right? That's not me. And as a proof that I'm, <laughs> as a proof that I'm middle aged, I actually, and I hate admitting this, but I actually Googled it. Her, her logic was, well, dad, you're not zero and you're not a hundred. You're right there in the middle. So you're middle aged. And um, I hate it when she's right. Google backed her up. Uh, I am in the age range for middle age, but she's been helping me take some, or try to take uh, much cooler selfies. Apparently I suck at that. So what better way to close the video out than to show you some of my attempts at post-run cool selfies. See you next week.